When evaluating normal probability problems, Excel can be of great assistance to us. We do have a couple options when it comes to using Excel, however, so let's take a look. We're going to take a look at IQ scores, which are normally distributed with a mean of 100 points and a standard deviation of 15. There's a couple functions we can use in Excel. The first requires you to find a z-score yourself, so you must use the formula for finding a z-score. z equals x, or the number in question, in this case 120, minus the mean, the mean was given to us as 100, divided by the standard deviation. Taking out a calculator, we know that 120 minus 100 is 20. And 20 divided by 15 is 1.33. Now we can turn to Excel to evaluate the probability given our z-score. In order to do this, we are going to insert a formula. So I'm going to go to the Formulas tab and insert a function. We're looking for norm dot s dot dist. The s means that we need the z-score. Well, we found the z-score, 1.33, and in the cumulative box for normal distributions, you are always going to put the value of 1. Once that is done, we're going to hit done, and we are given the probability. It is important to note that Excel always, always, always gives us the probability of less than. So if we are looking for a greater than, we do need to do a little bit of additional math work. Let's take a look at a different function we can use in Excel. The norm.s.dist requires you to do the background work of finding the z-score. There is a function built into Excel that does not require you to do this. It requires you to pick out the x the mean, and the standard deviation. Let's take a look at Part B. Find the probability of selecting an individual with a score greater than 150. Over in Excel, I'm going to continue to use the formula builder under Insert Function and look for norm.dist. Notice the lack of the letter S. This allows me to directly input the score I'm interested in, the mean, which was given to me, the standard deviation, and recall we always put the value 1 for cumulative. Oh, it did the work for me. However, we have to remember that Excel returns less than. We want greater than. So we need to do a little bit of additional work. I need to take the less than value and subtract that from 1. Now you may use a calculator, you know, a standard calculator, a cell phone, whatever. You may also use Excel to do this just by hitting the equal sign. That turns Excel into a calculator. 1 minus, and you may either type the number or just click on the box and hit enter. So there is my probability of greater than. Just keep in mind, if you do see greater than, you have to do that additional step of subtracting the probability from 1. So you have two options. You can find the z-score yourself, norm.s.dist, which has an advantage if you are given a problem in which you have only the z-scores and none of the surrounding information. Or, if you have the mean standard deviation and score you're interested in, you can jump right to norm.dist. What if you're looking for a range? Selecting an individual with a score between, the keyword is between, in this case, we need to do each of them individually, the higher end of the range and the lower end of the range. I'm going to use norm.dist because I do have the mean and standard deviation and score I'm interested in, so it saves me from having to find the z-score. The higher end of the range was 110, the mean of 100, the standard deviation of 15, and the cumulative value of 1. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the lower end, only now my score I'm interested in is 90, or the lower end of the range. The mean and standard deviation don't change, and the cumulative value is always 1, and I have two values. 
In order to find the probability between these two values, I need to subtract. Again, you may use a calculator or you may use Excel just by clicking on the number, hitting the equal sign first to turn Excel into a calculator, this number minus this number. Hit enter and you have your probability of between these values. So when using Excel, you have a couple of options. Pick the one that's most appropriate for your situation and let it do some of the heavy computational work for you.